All right, awesome. All right, so um, as you come in, uh, do us the the honor of seeing your beautiful faces. You would just have to go down and click the camera. There we go. Eugene, Zenita, good to see your beautiful faces. Franco has joined the party. Davina. I don't know how many people are from my era, but there was a uh, there was a TV show like for kids when I was a kid called the the magic garden anybody know what that was they would they had this mirror and they would um they would look through this mirror and actually it didn't even have a mirror and it. it was just a, a case of a mirror and they would say i see davina i see franco i see carolina and they never said jean-claude in those days you know so i was always hoping to be seen Good to see everybody. We're just going to take a minute or two and let people file in. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, Billy coming from some sort of straw hut somewhere in the world. Where where are you located, Billy? Yeah, in the Amazon. Oh, okay. This is my last week here. Then I'm going to the Sacred Valley and then Mexico. What an interesting Jose, one. Jose will not be here because he has to go to his son's admission for university open day something yeah. what matters most what matters most Valeria's on her way back to rishikesh she was just in dubai well you might this might sound boring to everybody but i'm in greenwich connecticut right now and uh the good news is is i have a very strong uh connection to the internet so we should be good to, <laughs> good to go um so as as people are are easing into this, once again, I'll I'll offer you know I see uh, J Jackie, Kristen, Nathaniel, Irma, Essence of Breath, Jen. If you guys could put your uh, your uh, video screen on so we could see your face for our there you go, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, how could you ever let somebody not see you? Look at you that beard and everything i'm in my bathroom putting my makeup on so that's why well listen you know <laughs> that's what they, they they say tmi but you know we're honored <laughs> to be in your bathroom with you yeah I, I won't have it pointed towards the toilet or anything but i'm standing in front of the mirror look at that we're just three minutes into our mastermind and the word toilet <laughs> I, anyway leave it to me great to see everybody um such a such an honor and a privilege to share this kind of space with with just extraordinary people um and i say extraordinary because you're extra beyond ordinary and maybe that's what we have to work on is figure out how to create a bridge for the ordinary to come into the extraordinary but we're going to talk about a really fun topic today that uh we've prepared for you um and we call it open and curious and I think you're going to really, really like it. Well, we hope you do, but it's very, very relevant in the sense of, uh, you know, what we what we're always talking about, you know, in this in this realm, with regards to integration, um, taking this experience, this access that we have. For those of you that have been to a uh, Arcana or any other sort of plant medicine retreat experience. Um, and gained access to to this information, um, and then it's you, it begins the process of what do we do with it? You know, how do we integrate it into our world? How do we? How does this fit? What do we do with it? So um, we we pick topics that will help you know that discussion go further. So you know this is something that's sponsored by Arcana, and uh, we call it the Arcana Integration Mastermind. Um, so we're going to take aim on that right now. But what's really cool about it is it's, is it's just an opportunity for us at least once a month um, beyond some of the extra services and support that's out there um, being going to an actual Arcana event um, retreat or working with some of the Arcana uh, coaching staff or facilitators or even just reaching out to one another and having conversation. We hope you're taking advantage of that. But this is a psychological safe haven a uh, judgment-free zone where we can uh, do the do the good work, which really has ramifications that extend into humanity. 
So for those of you that um, are either watching this as a video or you know coming to us live that have never experienced it and you're in that kind of contemplation phase or you're being called, um, that's part of the process. You know, the process has already begun for you. So we always welcome guests to come into this environment so that they can take their finger and put it on the pulse of the, the true heartbeat about, you know, the, the people that are involved in this. Um, we're honored and blessed to have uh, one of the uh, the facilitators and, uh, you know, one of the leaders of Arcana. You see Billy V up there, and he's in the Amazon right now getting ready to go to the Sacred Valley right after. How many people here are in the Amazon jungle getting ready to go to the Sacred Valley? <laughs> That's a pretty interesting lifestyle right there. Um, but anyway, so hopefully his internet will be good enough for him for, to join the conversation. Um, I see some familiar faces. There's my friend Bill. Good to see you, buddy. All right, so let's get into this. And then um, once I get through this, I'm going to kind of stimulate a conversation here today. And then we will be able to take this conversation um, into a mastermind style discussion. So I call this, um, I, this is something that I prepared. Actually, I didn't even tell you who I am. So my name is Dr. JC Dornick, uh, otherwise known as the Dragon. Um, I'm very, very much an advocate and a participant um, of the Arcana family. I, my life's been changed forever. As a result of it, um, not only the experience, not only the plant medicine, but the people that, that I've met through there. So I'm just uh, this guy that uh, is kind of good at this kind of a thing. And I've, I've uh, just dedicated a great portion of my life and my philanthropy and things like that to supporting the, the mission that is Arcana. Um, and I'm also a podcaster. So what I was going to say is I, I wrote an episode um, called Open and Curious. So I'm going to share some of that. And then we're going to get into a discussion. So as we're going right now, whatever thoughts and, and feelings or curiosities that you have, you might want to jot them down and then you'll be able to ask questions to the group, to, you know, to Billy, if he, if his uh, connection stays strong, looks like it is, um, or myself. Okay, fair. So welcome. Welcome. We're, we're happy that you've taken time to be here. Happy Halloween as well. We're all, and everything else that's coming. Hi, coming in. Okay. Basically, um, I'm going to open up with this question. So we call this open and curious, but I'm going to open up with this question that's directed at you. And, and that is, do you have a relationship of trust with the universe as a whole? Think about what that means. You know, that would be, that would represent the 99.9% .9 of the undiscovered, untouched world that you have zero control over. So that's why I would say, do you have a relationship of trust with the universe? So do you trust that it has a plan? A lot of people, that's debatable. Some people like to completely put their trust in that, and some people like to control things. Um, that plan being this idea of providing you with everything that you need to proceed. Or, or do you find yourself trying to control this outside world um, with feelings of worry and concern about it. Think about what that means. You know, we all know what worry and concern means, but what's interesting about worry and concern is they're typically associated with human beings trying to control things that are out of their control. That's a, that's a big insight right there. Um, Alan Watts, who is one of my favorite minds, who's, you know, long gone, but Alan Watts said that trying to understand and control the uncontrollables in life is like trying to drink the ocean with a fork. <laughs> I just love that. So the next time that you are like really freaked out and stressed out and full of worry and concern, um, just remember that idea of what would happen if you tried to drink just any water with a fork. So if we're to look at this, you know, at uncontrollable things in life as a kite. This is a cool analogy as well. Part of your integration process would be getting through some of these times and changing the way you look at them, right? So that the things you look at change. So if you were to look at the uncontrollable nature of this universe we're talking about as a kite that you're flying up in the windy skies, 
then the idea would be releasing your grasp of that string would be you developing that trust and allowing the universe to do what it does. And what's interesting about that is the universe is going to do what it does, whether you like it or not. But we still have this sense of trying to control things, and that's where we get into a little bit of a jam. So are you intent right now in your process of holding on to that string longer, or are you ready? So the word ready is the first word that is analogous with open and curious. Or are you ready to release your grasp on controlling things, right, that you don't control, and forming and developing little by little, this relationship of trust and oneness with the universe, or as Billy very often called it, the divine, this universal force, right? So the word trust is a big, big part of this idea of being open and curious. If you're to allow yourself to remain open to things, you'd have to have some form of trust. So I thought that was uh, relevant to share it that way. So I believe a very, very big part of integration is this what we're talking about right now. Um, I don't know if you guys can correlate it yet, but it'll be the premise of the discussing. The idea of releasing from trying to control things and beginning to receive, which is an open, you have to become open to receiving anything, receiving the messages that are actually always there. For those of you that have been on any sort of plant medicine retreat, specifically with Arcana, because it's done the right way, um, you probably received some sort of vision or message or or some sort of fantastical something. Um, and then when you went home, whether you still saw it or not, you know that it's kind of still there. You just can either see it or not, right? So this is a readiness thing. Are we ready to release control, you know, from this stuff so that we can begin receiving more of these messages that are there trying to come to us. Um, so this made me realize that I feel like plant medicine is a big discussion about like, when do I go back? How much plant medicine do I need? All of that stuff. So I believe that plant medicine is actually a vehicle and a tool that helps us simply release that grasp. So for those of you that have experienced plant medicine, I think you, you would understand what I mean, is it's very hard if you don't have a tool to release the grasp because you think that you're supposed to hold on to control. But plant medicine helps us release the grasp and allows us to experience present time awareness, which is where the magic actually exists. It happens now, not in the future or the past. Present time awareness um, of these blessings, these messages, right? So thanks to Arcana, you know, and everybody associated with that, and thanks to Grandmother, thanks to the universe, um, those of you here that have experienced it have been blessed with, I guess we could say, seeing the unseen. Nod your head up and down if you know what I'm talking about, right? Has anyone here ever... Can every, anyone here tell me that, yeah, I've seen something that I didn't know existed, right? So while, while we're here in this little comfort zone, this little jacuzzi experience, just remember that the world outside that you guys can see is completely bonkers. They don't know what you guys know. What would happen if the entire world knew what you guys knew? That's why, you know, Billy is extremely passionate about world change, not just like Amazon change. Right. So we're blessed. You know, we've had the blessing of seeing the unseen. So once we saw it, it moved into our existence forever. So even if you can't see something right now, you maybe we get home and in the integration process, we, we lose sight of things. You guys still know it's there because you saw it. You dig? So today, I want to also recognize you guys as well. We're talking about this like mystical force out there that you guys have seen, but I want to recognize all of you that for whatever reason made a decision, and I don't know if you're aware of this, to become open and curious enough where you moved past curiosity. I don't know if you remember when you were curious about this. Hey, what's that 
plant medicine stuff, right? And you started to like ask the wrong people about it and, and everything, right? And you thought you were going to like climb up to a mountain and find some sort of an eagle that was going to give you a message or something like that. But you guys, for whatever reason, bypassed that curiosity and moved into an open circuit with it, meaning you were open to try it. That's a powerful thing. So I just want to recognize all of you. And if somebody's in that contemplation phase right now, you you can see that the the only thing you would need to do is for however you would do it is become open. But that's a powerful, powerful move. Um, and we're going to talk about that today. So this is what I want today to be about or what it's intended to be about. Um, it's a step towards all of your further expansion that's kind of what integration has a lot to do with it's like the evolution of it further expansion um, of your integration um, so today is about allowing yourself to continue this process of becoming further open and curious um, raise your hand blink your eye or whatever if anyone here knows what it's like to come back from an experience get slammed in the face with reality and not know how to process it, right? Maybe it's family, friends, or like, God forbid you turn on the news, you know, you're screwed, right? So can you see that you, even though you guys know something that everybody doesn't know, it's, it's challenging to navigate. So you have to continue this process of remaining open circuit, open and curious, not only to what might be, but also what might not be. Right. Remember, along with all the crazies out there, you guys have all been programmed to believe whatever it is that you believe. So um, it's an interesting concept to consider that all of those. Hold on, let me get this. Who's that? OK, it's an interesting concept also to consider that all these magical things and messages and lessons that we get from the plant medicine experiences we're, we're always there, as I said before, but we just couldn't see them until we allowed ourselves the opportunity to see them. What else could you see if you allowed yourself an open channel to see it? This is so fascinating about this, because once you learn how to move into this space in your integration process, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff. And it's not all psychedelic and freaky. It's stuff that's like, the universe is like, hey, I've been trying to show you this for a long time, but you've been too busy worrying about things. Um, so I don't know, like I said, I don't know what it is that allowed you guys to do that, but you're very special and uh, it's what I want the conversation. Um, I wrote here that I love how I always heard Billy and Jose and all the other wonderful people and the shamans um, talk about plant medicine and plants in general as teachers. Anybody hear them refer to plants as teachers? I don't know. I don't know if you put any thought to that, but when I thought about that, I was like, well, what are they teaching us? Right? I mean, because I remember what it was like to not pay attention in school and come home and be like, yeah, this teacher's terrible, but you guys have a maybe have an idea, but it's an interesting thing to write down. What are they teaching us? What's the message? What, what What is the guidance that we're getting from it? It's not just about you. It's a bigger plan. Um, and then you can also have some fun. By the way, I wrote a whole blog post and dissertation on this. If anybody's interested in going deeper into this stuff, like Carl Jung and all that stuff, um, just reach out. and I'll, I'll, It's a Google Doc. I'll send it to you. Um, but there's a woman named Carol Dweck that talks about another version of this, where she talks about a fixed mindset versus a closed mindset. And then there's also people that refer to this as an open circuit versus a closed circuit. Um, and if anybody here knows what this is, anybody know what these are? These are really interesting. These are SD cards, and I can either make it right protected or right capable. How many of your brains are right protected right now? The people that you're struggling to communicate with in the world, they don't even know it, but their right protect switch is on and that's because they're scared. 
you guys know something different. You 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 took your right protect switch off and you went to some sort of crazy place. And now you know, right? So that's what I wanna that's what I want to discuss today. So, you know, where do you find yourself today in this whole thing? So I want to open up the mastermind. And maybe Billy can say some say things on this because I always love to hear what he has to say. But let's open up the mastermind about this idea of this powerful practice of developing, further developing, we're never done, an open and curious mindset um, and how it brought you to this current place where you're at right now. Billy? Yeah, I'm just processing a lot. Um, there's, a, there's a quote which is, um, to the mind that is still the whole universe surrenders. And um, it's like being present, like just being, just being here where you are. You can't go anywhere. You are here. So just being where you are right here in the, in the now-ness of now, you open yourself to the field of pure potentiality, pure imagination, pure creation, and you surrender naturally to um, the natural flow of the universe and cosmic creation. And within that paradigm, what you can control is nothing but the way you are, the, the way you feel, the intention uh, that you bring the action that you take, the step that you walk. So all you can control um, in your beingness is the way you are being, which is, do you choose uh, to be with love in your heart or fear in your mind? And then step by step, moment to moment, you uh, walk and express that, create that reality. Um, yeah, moment to moment. And um, I also see open and curious. I've been thinking about that in an integrative approach. And like the most open and curious people are children. Like they're so curious. Like I always say that when when you first see a train, you're in awe. You're like, wow, look at this train when you're three, four, five years old. And then, and then one day you have to commute by train and you're like, fuck, I have to wait for this train. But nothing changed. Just your perception of your experience of reality and what the CSCs is seen. So... When you do it with like a loving and open heart, what you see is open and loving. When you do it with like stress, closed mindedness, what you see uh, is stressful and, and limited. So for me as well, open and curious is just, to, especially like in an integrative sense, is to stay as a child of the universe, to stay in your being as a child with a, a playful, um, loving, accepting, curious, explorative uh, attitude and to try new things without, without fear of this idea of success or fa failure, just uh, to experience uh, the experience of experience uh, and accept it just as it is with, with love and as you see with love, um, as you see with curiosity and playfulness, lightheartedness, then you experience your reality with, with love, with lightheartedness, with playfulness, and um, and and that's life. Recently, I had this insight in the medicine, which uh, I'm gonna post sometime, which is like, is something like, rivers flow, trees grow, flowers bloom, stars shine, birds sing, and. That's the nature of nature. And we are children of nature. 
we are born from nature, we return to nature. So then our, our, our natural nature is actually to uh, flow and grow and shine and uh, sing, uh, let go, and uh, all of these things that were, are in alignment with the natural flow of cosmic creation. So be that and, j and just be who you are, a child of nature, a child of love. Uh, be playful, enjoy, enjoy. You know, what's so interesting about what I, what just crossed my mind is I can I can I can un almost understand why somebody would remain close, right? Because the idea of like all of a sudden finding out that everything that you've gone on to get to this part of your life might be false is a scary thing. Even even if you kind of like inherently know that there's a good chance that it's been made up. I mean, if you think about it, one thing that we all come have in common is we came from this big bang idea like we're all the same but along the way we had to we had to come up with these stories that like helped us make sense of an unsensible world so when you when you went on your experience uh do you guys remember does anybody remember the 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 four steps that you take um during your plant medicine experience to kind of come back to center anybody remember them what were they anybody quiz time even if you know just one or two of them, who anybody want to share? Uh, intention. Okay, so you remember your intention. Great. What else? Your breath. Your breath. Great. Grow. Posture. Grow. Right. The the, the 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 chanting that's there, which is like a mantra when you're meditating, right? And then what? Posture. So when I heard that, I remember. Like, I didn't think I needed that until all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, what were those four things? <laughs> I was like, well, I need, I need some help right now. Um, but what's interesting is people like Billy, people like Jose, they know that gaining access to this unseen can be overwhelming. And that's the very reason why everybody closes to it. Scary to find out even like, touch the truth or the potential truth, more importantly, opposite of what you always thought. So, you know, I, I, I got serious about my intentions when I started to recognize like how much prep there was for it and stuff, you know? Um, I just want to say- I, I, well, I carried that on in my life. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that, I mean, like if you look at being open or closed in, in terms of like a door, if you close the door, what do you allow in and how do you get out? I mean, you can't, you're stuck and you don't let anything flow into your life. You, you can't leave to explore life. So actually you completely shut off. It's like you might have a, a door and the other side is Narnia, but you're not, you, you don't open to the possibility of the imagination and creation. And, and with the, uh, I was just thinking about what you were saying about posture, breath, intention, and Icaro. And I was saying, I was thinking like you could really take those pillars and, and the fifth, which I include, which is gratitude. So let's say five pillars. And you could really take those and then just take them into your daily ceremony of life. So good posture is to be confident, like be confident in who you are. It's not arrogant to be confident and it's, it's an expression of self-love like as a child of the universe to um, experience yourself as you are. Um, breath, enjoy your breath. Your breath is your life. So enjoy your life. Um, intention, like what is the intention that you do anything with? What level of mind, mindfulness uh, or mindlessness do you do something with? So what is your intention behind it? What is the energy frequency and vibration that you are um, creating with. And then Icaros, obviously, you could look at the Icaros as a song or a mantra. So then one, what mantra do you repeat to yourself? Are you kind to yourself? Do you have 
positive uh, affirmations in your mind or in relation to it being a song like what song are you singing like what what song are you singing in your life the the song the song of life it's interesting yeah and all of that stuff would be things that you would only start practicing on the other side of becoming open and curious to learning more. You wouldn't need to do any of that stuff. That's what's great about not allowing anything new in your life. It's got a it's got a sucky side to it. Like I love that you said that you won't let anything in and you're also stuck inside. I, I never thought of that. When you close yourself off to the outside, you, you've closed yourself off to the outside. Um, but there's work involved in expansion. You know, there's, there's a very, very distinct reason in the business world why so few people reach high levels. It's not that everybody can't, everybody can. It's just what, whether or not they will. Um, one of the things that, here's a little bit of a tool. One of the things that uh, I teach a lot of the people I work with is, uh, it's a practice of cognitive distancing. Um, and this kind of comes from Viktor Frankl's work, you know, A Man's Search for Meaning, which is a great book. But, uh, you know, he just, this is a guy that went through the, the Nazi death camps and found his way on the other side to forgive those people for what they did. Like, how could he do that? So he says that he distanced himself from the stimulus, the thing, and separated himself from his knee-jerk response to the space in between. So that's where cognitive distancing was built. So if you can develop a tool to distance yourself from your knee-jerk reaction of what you see when you have worry and concern, you might step into a more clear space and make a more logical decision. So I teach this, this sound whenever somebody says something to me or Billy even creates an insight or anything, or somebody says something that bothers me, I just make this sound. I say, hmm. Now, if you write that down, if you have a pen, write it down. It's spelled H-M-M-M. -M -M. Hmm. Just like that. And think about what it means. It means interesting. I heard you out of respect. Not sure about it yet, right? But what it stands for, and I made this up, is that I haven't made up my mind yet. So this is an interesting question to ask yourself when you're alone is, what have you made your mind up about? Because as soon as you do, that's a closed circuit. Isn't that an interesting concept? Because we're, we're taught that there's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. So make up your mind, put an exclamation point behind a statement that you believe is 100% true. Once I experienced Arcana, I recognize that I don't know too much and I like it that way. So I haven't made up my mind about anything yet. And if you check back with me in a year, I'll probably be there too. So what I'd love to do is open it up. Um, we've got some beautiful and amazing people here. I was just, I'm so happy that uh, Michael's here. I, I was talking to Michael about just that moment where Michael just like, everybody's like, oh my God, Michael's dancing like a crazy person. And I'm like, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen before. I think about it all the time. What, that's another fun thing. And you guys can share those. Sometimes we, we remember these, these experiences that just make me smile from ear to ear. That's one of them, Michael dancing in, the, in Mexico. But anyway, let's open up this discussion. You can ask questions. You've got Billy here that is just all powerful and knowledgeable. You can make a, a, a distinction or an observation or a statement or a share. But uh, let's hear from some of you guys because that's what makes this special. Who would like to share or ask questions? Or are you guys all closed? <laughs> <laughs> Who's open to sharing? It's funny. I don't know if you can see Ty is like obviously on a business call pacing back and forth. <laughs> That's funny. So I'd love to hear from some of you. Anybody have an insight on this? Go ahead, Nina. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, 
I feel like I have a lot to say, but I know I, we're short in time. Um, I will say um, after our last retreat in Tulum, um, that was in June, I think it was in June, right? In the May, June. Um, in July, um, I went to Mexico again to visit my biological family for the very first time in my life. And, um, and when I left the retreat in May, oh man, we had such an amazing time. The peyote, I mean, everything was perfect. Um, oh, I felt so much love. I felt everything in like 100% magnitude, right? And I carried that feeling that my whole awareness of so much in the universe and my reason for being here and just my ancestors, everything just connected. And my, you know, three times before of going to retreats, I struggled with my trauma, you know, things like that as a child and all of that. Um, and that last retreat, let me tell you, is what just like, bloop, okay, Nina, you're good. You're healed. And let me tell you something. And to this, even to this moment right now, I feel it still. When I say that, I mean, I still have, I still have a lot of um, things I need to navigate through, right? With like the war that's going on, you know, you know, here in the United States, election, like a lot of just stuff, right? A lot of stuff, a lot of static. And it's just now everything is kind of like floating in the air, but like this this retreat that I went to, the peyote, the medicine, everything just is teaching me a lesson to how to navigate all these things, right? Still. Um, but I have this still this sense of like. Dude, if I think about my past, if I think about things that used to bother me and used to make me feel cringy or whatever, I don't feel it anymore. I still don't. So I went, when I went to Mexico to see my biological family, my father, he was not a good man at all. But I, when I went to Mexico, I went there with pure love, pure love. And... It's it's just so profound to me because it never in my life would I ever thought about meeting my biological family, going through all that, having to, you know, face the truth or tell people the truth, my family, all of that. My family was so full of love, accepting of everything that happened that I told them. And we gave each other endless hugs and kisses and we had like food galore and just like the whole time was just perfect. So I'm saying is like the medicine. I mean, has taught me so much. I'm so blessed. And I say my gratitudes every day. And I remember to have my intention in most things. And I try to do it in anything that I do. When I eat my food, I say thank you for whoever died or like whoever picked it or whoever made it. Um, but I, I always remember Billy's in my mind enjoy enjoy and I remember I just I'm just so I'm so thankful for the medicine but I still struggle with you know like what you said um with you know things you can't control right like don't focus on things you can't control but in my mind it's like yeah maybe you can't control things but you can at least help things you can help to um, like for me with the war that's going on in Lebanon and Gaza, like I'm just torn apart about, about it. I have been for the longest time. As much as I can't do anything, but I can, I can support businesses. I can do whatever, right. In my life right now, I can donate money. I can help local families. I can go out and do whatever. I had to delete my social media because that's just a trigger. There's just so much static, right? I don't need in my life. And so it's about a balance. And finding that balance is what I'm struggling to have. But I'm not having that trauma like I had before. Like with my with me personally, my personal life. It's just like the exterior world. And I'm trying not to react to it. Because I understand the universe has everything planned out. You know, the present, right? I can only focus on the present. I understand that. But it's like... 
I feel guilty sometimes being able to have this moment to talk about myself, to meditate and to think about, oh, you know, in the moment while people are getting slaughtered for no reason, you know, I just, and I know that happens all the time in the world, but it's like my awareness is open more to where I can see things and humanity is what bothers me, you know? I just wish everybody had this medicine, right? You know, this one love kind of mindset, but it's like, it makes me so sad inside when I see, you know, people not have those rights, the ability to be in this moment like we can be, you know? Sorry, long, long rant. Uh, what's in? I want to hear Billy um, chime in on this. But what's interesting, you, you hear this idea of struggle, right? That like, what is the goal to everybody never struggles again? I mean, like, how could how would you even know that you're having a good day if you didn't like constantly be reminded what a bad day is? And what's interesting about if you study the science of uh, of flow, there's something called the flow state, which is this proverbial like blissful state where everything is just going your way effortlessly and all of that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the flow state, but uh, guess what comes right before you enter flow? Struggle. So, you know, whenever it's an interesting thing to consider, I'm not saying I'm I'm an advocate for like war and stuff like that, but if if you were to ask, you know, an ancient Buddhist master, I'm sure that they would say it's all part of it, right? Change the way you look at things. So the next time you're feeling struggle, it's it really has more to do with how you release from struggle than how you look at it. And anybody that knows Nina, she spends all of her time taking care of everybody. That's how she handles the struggle, right? So you're doing great. <laughs> Billy? Um, I was talking to somebody recently about the flow. like all the rivers lead to the same ocean idea, but we were talking about um, when you flow, when you just surrender to the flow, you flow with that river leading back to the ocean. But then we were talking about like, well, actually with resistance or struggle, if you like, is, um, which is resistance, is swimming up the river. So against the natural flow. But actually, if you swim up the river, you make yourself strong. Like you, you'll increase your your muscles, your your power, etc. So, so some level, it, it's like the same principle, like um, a, a a tree that withstands the storm grows deep roots. It's all the same sort of principle, and actually, like you need some struggle to. Uh, create like a healthy strength to then flow uh with life a little bit and and also um i was thinking about like what you can control what nina said what you control is your contribution listening to us uh, uh did we lose billy everybody's like no What, what's interesting, oh, there he is. Are you back? Yeah, I'm really sitting with the philosophy of um, to receive is giving back. Because, because for example, with the situation of war, because I've thought about this myself, like how can I say, oh, be love, be light. And then obviously like there's a war going on. Is it is it guilty? But actually what I can give to that is love. And I am a individualized co-creator as a contributor to collective creation. And our collect our individual consciousness contributes to collective creation in the global conscious collective, which is our global reality. So actually the best way to contribute to the global conscious collective and as a byproduct, the global uh, collective creation which is a reflection of consciousness on the global level 
which works it works individually it works collectively like what is my contribution my contribution is to be love to give love to express love and if everybody did that there would be no war so so what i can do instead of feeling guilty or feeling fear or feeling sad i can give pure unconditional love and if each person does that then actually you change um that in the architecture of reality in in manifest creation just with your own intention so so the best you can do the contribution you can give is to be love to give love in the moment that you are in to everything to all the people that you see to all the situations that happen and know that struggle makes you strong mentally physically emotionally spiritually so that's it you, you know what's what's such an it, what's fun about this group is we can entertain any vantage point and uh, at, the truth is is once you all leave here you're going to go back to whatever you decide to do right? um but what's fun in here is we can contemplate things but uh you know one interesting potential challenge to this concept of just think about what would be the opposite of war. Anybody have a word? What's the opposite of war? Anybody? What did you, what did you say, Carolina? Carolina? I guess it would be peace, no? Okay, great. So let's say we've eradicated war. Would you still appreciate peace? Or would you get bored with it? Right. In fact, would there even be something called peace if not for, you know, there's no light without dark, right? So it's another, I, I'm not saying like, oh, great, thank God there's war so I can appreciate peace, but it's true. It's true. Um, and this is, this is a, a, a very healthy way because we get to choose what side we're on. And some of you guys are at war with some things in your mind, right? But uh, we get to wake up every morning and either make up our minds about things or become open and curious to everything, even your thoughts, right? And another cool tool is just an exchange of punctuation. So anytime you make a statement about reality, evaluate if it has an exclamation point or a question mark at the end, right? You could say, I'm really worried about this war, exclamation point. Or you could say, I'm really worried about this war and allow yourself to be open and curious to like looking at all aspects of how it might even be part of the process and things. And you don't have to do that, but it's just another vantage point and it's all based on this idea that if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. So it's fun to be able to just learn some tools of looking at that. Um, this conversation is happening be because this space that we're in right now is because we all share something very, very much in common. And that's this experience. And you guys all know, if you've seen the unseen, then you know that all things are off the table or on the table, right? Anything's possible. So um, I'd love to hear from some, some more of you. I see a lot of you nodding your heads and saying, yeah, you know, but I'd, I'd love to hear what's going on in some of your minds. Anybody or your hearts? I'll choose someone. I just want to say as well, okay. really quickly, like talking of, peace or talking of love um, or any beautiful high vibrational quality is like how do you give something that you don't have so how how can you give anything that you don't have yourself like let's take money if i have no money how do i give somebody money but i'm using that money's currency currency's energy so how I, do I give any currency of energy unless I, I have it to give? And if you take that um, perspective or principle into your own life, 
then it's like how do i um distill or experience that quality within myself cultivate within myself expand and amplify that within myself so that i have it to give so if it was love or peace in, in the case that you just said peace how do i um find peace or express peace or give peace how do i give love or provide love um is actually to cultivate it an abundance of it within yourself primarily and then you have it to give so again that's integration is finding these qualities uh, within yourself let, letting them amplify within your life and cultivating them in a way to give otherwise you don't you don't have to give yeah, it's like a, it's it, whatever it is that you embody you you don't you can almost further but beyond sharing pay it forward by even just representing it and leading it that's one of the reasons why i've always respected billy i mean he's a very wise guy and i always love what he has to say but if you hide behind a tree in the jungle and watch him he, he's also being that way <laughs> you know what i mean like uh it's not a, it's not an act and I, we all know you know the the word person actually comes from the word mask i don't know if you know this this is a carl Jung thing but persona refers to a mask you know and that is this thing that we can peer through and look at but not be seen so we're all wearing masks out in the world right but uh i've met people through arcana i mean nobody's perfect right but i've met people through arcana that you know spend quite a bit of time without a mask on and it's just pleasant that's one of the things that i love about this group is it's a it's an opportunity to take off our masks. Most of us will put it on when we leave here. Um, that's why I wear glasses without lenses, you know, just trying to let go of everything. Great. Franco with the yellow hand up. Hello. My uh, signal might be a little spotty. Can you hear me? Yeah, stay right where you are. <laughs> um. So I just wanted to chime in on some of the things that I've been listening to. Uh, this is my second time on the call. I went to Arcana um, end of September, uh, transformative, life-changing, just to say the least. Uh, the analogy of the shut door, wow, it's powerful. Although it's so simple, but uh, the curiosity of if, you, if the door's closed, you can't, you're locking yourself in is, is very powerful. Um, and then going on the struggle, um, I have I have a tattoo that I got in my mid teens um, on my ribs that says, uh, "Without struggle, there is no progress." And at that age, I already had gone through a lot of struggle. Um, and then after going to this retreat, um, I had a lot of realizations. And one was that my focus was a lot on the struggle still, and not the progress. So I just kept I kept bringing more struggle to myself, because they say where um, where focus goes, energy flows. So my energy and focus was all on the struggle and it just kept on giving me more struggle. And now it's shifted to, to progress. And um, what, I've, what I've learned and, and since then, only a month, is that if I continue to look at the progress and build and create the person who I wanna be uh, every day, um, that's where my progress is. And I have the opportunity to create that person who I'm becoming the man that I'm becoming every day. Um, I, I realized that at the retreat, it was like every day I'm being reborn because I, I, I had the thought that, well, I transformed and I was reborn here at the, at the, at the center, but it's like, no, I'm, I'm being reborn every day and I have a chance to become the best version of myself every single day. So I just wanted to give you my thoughts and thank you everyone for being here and thank you guys for putting this on. I'm very grateful. Maestro, I'll see this. My my professor I'll see says um happy birthday. See says happy birthday every day to everybody. And he got that through his struggle. Everybody he sees, happy birthday. Mm. 
and, and it's like that's the, <laughs> that's the Buddhist philosophy, which is every day you're born again. What well, today matters. So you're you're actually like a blank canvas every day, and you get to decide what you create, what you paint, and what you imagine, and then um, become the embodiment of that, which is moment to moment living amplified over time in space and, and that reality that's beautiful and i see and frankly you're, you're don't take this the wrong way i'm a married man but you're beautiful um and you know, what's interesting <laughs> is you can, see, you, you can see in the background franco's walking around and there's trees there and you know if you you'll it's an interesting observation but those trees are directly connected to the same trees in the jungle where you were, mm. directly connected, directly, no Wi-Fi, directly connected. So you're still there, you know, walking around nature. And um, another interesting, uh, God, there's a whole bunch of people coming in. I guess some people thought it was at a different time, Billy. Um, another interesting uh, perspective 